There are a lot of memes surrounding this ship. This is the mighty Drake. Now, I have friends who fly the Drake as their main PvP ship and they have been wiping the floor with faction cruisers. So that got me very interested in this ship, so I have decided to go and fly it for a bit. There is a big chance that the Drake becomes my main PvP battlecruiser. After all, I haven't been flying battlecruisers in a very long time. So with that being said, I think it will be time to quickly check out the Drake's trait description, the skills and the bonuses, you know, the most important part of any ship. Should be pretty interesting. The roll bonus plus 25% minimum missile torpedo flight velocity can fit common burst modules. Okay. Advanced medium missile torpedo upgrade bonus will give you plus 12.5% minimum missile torpedo kinetic damage, plus 12.5% thermal damage, and the Pella Cruiser Command bonus will give you plus 4% shield resistance per skill level. So technically you can fly this ship as an alpha clone, you don't get the extra damage but you get the extra tank, which is also very important. Overall I'm quite satisfied with the with the skills on the Drake. Now the Drake has one drone, seven high slots, three medium, five low, three combat and three engineering rigs. The Drake as most Caldery ships is primarily a shield tank. I have seen so many armor tank drakes that I have just no words for that. The Drake has a very bad capacitor some cruisers have uh, a capacity with a larger volume and I think this is basically one of the drawbacks for this ship. The Drake is slow and the capacitor is not the best so you really will have to use capacitor batteries on this boat. So speaking of the build, let's take a look at what type of build I have on this ship. So. I have prepared a couple of them in the fitting management and the first one is with the rapid missiles. Now I kinda like to use the Drake as a close range to mid range ship. Of course you can also use it as a long range boat but it has that tank and tanky ships usually are meant to take hits so I prefer to run uh, rapid missiles or torpedo launchers. Rapid missiles are excellent for PvP, they can wreck frigates, they can wreck cruisers, and in some cases they can also wreck Pella cruisers, while the torpedo launchers are better for larger targets. 632.02 DPS, 5.1 km per second is the velocity, Explosion velocity 170 meters per second, explosion radius 27.54, and the range is 26.3 kilometers. I have one afterburner, one large capacitor battery, dual adaptives, one large shield booster. Now I thought to place one large, one C-type large, but unfortunately not enough power grid. So the Mark 9 has to do the work now. As for the rigs, the combat rigs have one anti-thermal screen reinforcer, one anti-EM reinforcer and one core defense field extender. However, you can easily replace the third rig with the rig that can improve the capacitor use or the that can reduce the capacitor use of the shield booster or you can also go with cheaper integrations that also uh, works really well 69,000 hit points which honestly is okay I'm quite happy with the results 52, 65, 52 and 60% 60 resistances which is pretty balanced dual ancillary power grid and one universal to be combat uh, one universal engineering integration 
uh, because of the bad capacitor and because of the of the power grid. Now as for the nano core, I have the exile core. This nano core is obtainable via the Concord Pass and it's one of the better ones if you ask me because you get extra shield boost and that's that is going to be important for uh, for this ship and honestly the extra shield booster performance is definitely going to be very nice okay let's undock and Undocking. let's see how the active stats on this ship look now as usual the game likes to mess up my modules so my apologies uh, for the mess in the module layout over there I'll quickly fix that okay this should be I thought to have two groups but I guess let's just have one big group and let's take a look at the active stats. Now the DPS is the same, the defense is actually really good on the Drake. I would say definitely one of, one of the tankier, one of the tankiest battle cruisers. It is quite comparable with the with the Prophecy, although the Prophecy is an armor tank. The capacity 1 minute and 38 seconds, signature 246 meters and 583.61 meters per second is the flight velocity with the afterburner, 1.4 thousand is, is the shield boost and 6.16 seconds is the activation time. Okay well uh, let's dock and let's change into a different build. I have to say the Drake does look very good. It It is a very aesthetically pleasing to look at ship. So the next build is going to be the normal missile build. Now, again, like I mentioned before, you can use any missile system that you like uh, if you make the build work with the weapon system. But in my case, I personally prefer the Drake to be a close range to mid range ship. Of course, you can also use it as a long range ship if you like. Now, with the normal missiles, I kind of did run out running a little problem with the power grid basically you will see what I'm talking about when the modules load in and yeah the power grid is basically maxed out now usually I like to fit C types or in some cases when I don't have C types I fit A types but in this case I had to fit the Caldery Navy missiles now nothing wrong with using Caldery Calder missiles, uh, they're okay, they have good range, good DPS and overall they perform really well. Dual webs, one long range disruptor, one capacitor battery, dual adaptives, afterburn and a large shield booster. And the power grid is literally maxed out, 1346 out of 1346. Now there is something satisfying about looking at this because I don't know, uh, when everything just falls in its place and it looks so perfect, it just looks satisfying. The rigs are basically the same, might change only one, uh, one rig and I will show you if I do that later on. Next build is going to be the torpedo build. Now I really like to use torpedoes on uh, on my missile ships recently. It all started with the Ortus and now uh, it is progressing towards the, the Drake. The Drake can have about the same DPS as the Ortus, of course without the speed and extra range and without the extra application, but it still can push some pretty good numbers. Almost 1000 DPS, 938.71 with a tank build. Here you can take a look at the missile stats. The only drawback is the range. So if you plan to use the Drake with torpedoes, make sure that you do land in range from your target. And make sure that 
the target doesn't orbit you away from your range. The rest of the build is the same. One anti-thermal, anti-EM, and of course the same engineering rigs. Overall, quite happy with the current result. Now, I have extra pirates, uh, and I thought, let me see if I can put one large neutralizer. Unfortunately, it's not really that easy, of course. I can see a room where I could downgrade some of the modules in order to fit a large neutralizer, and a large neutralizer is definitely going to be terrifying into PvP for your target, because you already have a large capacity battery and you already have a good tank, so you can use the capacity battery to basically uh, power the neutralizer and to kill the capacitor of your target. The Drake has the potential and it is one of the best ships that you can take for a bait ship. Now I did manage to slap that neutralizer but the power grid did say no and basically I'm definitely not going to use a large neutralizer without a capacitor battery on a ship that has a very bad capacitor. So yeah, don't use a large neutralizer unless you have a large capacitor battery on the Drake. And the next build, now here I think things will be a bit more interesting since the Drake can fit command burst modules. So you can improve the tank or you can improve the speed or you can even improve the range of the webs, scramblers, points and things like that. For your ship and for your teammates. Now, the command bursts can also be used solo and the first one is the shield command burst. This module will improve the parameters of your shield, will increase the resistance, the volume, it increases, it actually, uh, my apologies, it reduces the capacity on it, which is important for this ship. And the rigs are the same, everything else is the same. Now this is the moment where I changed the rig, uh, because I thought to myself, well, I have extra shield, I can take this and now I have extra uh, capacitor, so both options are good and it will work really well. Now, with uh, the command burst modules, make sure that you have fuel, because they run on fuel and you have to, refu you have to refuel your ship. Forgot how to speak for a second, my apologies. It's a 3 and 22 a.m. and I'm perhaps becoming a vampire so yeah <laughs> things things are late over here at the moment so let me quickly refuel this boat well I actually yeah uh, wrong click my apologies okay back in the Drake let's quickly refuel this thing and okay refuel let's undock and let's take a look at the active stats Undocking. of this current build. It should give me extra extra tank. I expect a increase of 10,000 hit points and I expect to have about 80% average shield resistances. Now of course uh, if you really like the ship you can easily go with integrations I would probably go with integrations, they are currently very cheap, but if you want a classic build, then the current build that I have is definitely um, a good inspiration to, to take. 136,000 hit points, honestly, I'm quite impressed by its hit points. I would actually say that the Drake has a bit more hit points than the, than the Prophecy Command. Although, again, both ships have different, I guess, tactics and they're made a little bit differently, but 
very in very interesting to to see that this thing can be so tanky and the dps is honestly still really good uh, still really solid dps and this is without any magic implant active basically uh, the current implants have no units installed i removed that so uh, i have only the the ship's stats active and honestly i'm pretty happy with, with the drake so far uh, not really sure why all the memes were so uh, so active at the time. I think the Drake was just that good because at least in this game the Drake is actually Docking a really really accepted. solid ship. Haven't been in a, in the Drake in Evo Nine for a while, so I can't really say how the ship performs now in that game. But I'm fairly sure that it's still really really solid and really good. So. Uh, this was the shield command burst. Now let me go and show you the skirmish command module. Now the skirmish command module is one of my personal favorites because that module can give you an insane advantage in PvP because it can give you extra range on the webs and on the scramblers as well as on the points. And I had now some of, some of my friends say that this is a 3000 IQ build, although I'm just using the ship stats. However, I will admit, I haven't seen many drakes using the skirmish modules. Which is sad, because this module improves the stats and the combat performance on this thing a lot. Same can be said about any uh, combat battle cruiser that can fit uh, these modules. They're highly useful, and I do encourage players to uh, to use this module because it's it's really good. And extra range, extra web, extra disruptor range, extra scrambler range can be life and death in PvP. So again, a very Undocking. important stat to to include. Okay, let's see how much it increases. Now I know some ships have a bonus on this module, so in some cases your range will be a little bit higher on some ships, a little bit lower on other ships, but uh, overall it does give about the same effect. So, let me quickly readjust all the modules as usual. Because the game loves to troll me. And let's see the the active stats of the ship now of course the defense is a little bit lower because the shield module is out let me refresh the window okay the speed has been improved a little bit now it's 608.82 meter per second 16.07 kilometer is the web range which is really good and 14.93 km is the scrambler range, which again is really good. You have a kilometer or two kilometer advantage over your opponent, and that is going to be valuable. Even the single traders did go down a little bit, so even that is affected by the skirmish command boost. And of course, this affects your whole team. So, if you are flying this ship in a fleet, this is going to be one very important module in order to improve the stats of, of your fleet. Okay, now, since I'm already talking about a fleet, uh, I will show you Docking request one more accepted. build. Now the next build is not going to be a solo build and I would say don't use this build if you are solo. If you are solo use either the shield or the skirmish module but never both because you need the web. The web can help you to apply the damage on the target. So the fleet builds. Now the Drake as many other Karma Balakruzes cannot be used in fleets. They have Again, the command burst modules that improve the parameters of the entire fleet, and this boat can fit both of the command burst modules. I did leave one slot uh, for the for the scrambler because that is 
going to be used probably. The drawback with this ship is the lack of medium slots. If the ship had a fourth slot, you could use uh, this build into PvP easily because you can use one web, one scrambler, and the two command burst modules side by side. But unfortunately, the Drake has only three medium slots, so you have to pick one module. I believe the Guardian or the Loggy Drake can actually uh, fit the same modules. I will have to double check that. Of course, I also plan to do a video on those ships. Let me quickly readjust the modules because the game just, you know, the game likes to do this and I got used to to readjusting the modules every five minutes, so yeah, nothing, nothing to worry about. Okay, uh, the modules are active and now you get the benefits of both modules, extra tank and extra range, extra speed. Again, uh, very good for our fleet, not really good for solo. If it had a, if the ship had a fourth medium slot, then yeah, this would definitely be the way to go, and I would probably be using a build like this. All right, now on to the implants. Now, as for the Drake, again, the implants are not really necessary. If you like the ship and if you like to improve the the DPS or if you like to use the implants, then you can easily go and use the implants. Now the Warhead Charge definitely remains my personal favorite missile implant. Now keep in mind, the Drake has a bonus on kinetic and thermal missile damage. So for the damage type on the Warhead Charge implant, pick either thermal or kinetic. As for the general units, the classic setup, capacitor batteries, ship boosters and things like that. Basically any setup that you that you have on on the ship. Now let me again show you the stats. Here you can take a look at the at the bonus kinetic and thermal. So you can pick kinetic or thermal missiles. Thermal hates shield as much as armor, so you can use the thermal at all times, while kinetic is good against armor and hull, but shield might have good resistance against it, so for overall damage, I would say thermal, but if you have EM missiles, then you can combine EM missiles with kinetic missiles and I believe that this thing will shred. Okay, well that was a Attack. smooth transition. Uh, I did not plan to make the transition to, to combat this smooth, but it happened. That was totally by accident, by the way. So, let's see how this little boat feels in, co in combat. Now, I have the tradition Attack. to learn the ship before I uh, fly the ship into PvP. That is something that I learned uh, with time and that way I can actually correct some mistakes in the build, I can correct some of my own mistakes in piloting the ship. Basically, you know, you learn the ship and after you get comfortable with the boat, then you can easily handle the boat. Now my orbit was set at zero. So uh, a zero kilometer orbit can work depending on the target. After all, missiles don't really need tracking. 1.4 thousand DPS with thermal missiles active, which is okay for a tank build. Again, uh, even 900 DPS is going to be really solid. Now I was talking about how my friends are flying the deck into PvP and they are clapping faction cruisers. That is true. Uh, the Drake has the potential to be a very, very terrifying opponent, especially in the hands of a skilled pilot. 
I had a fight with one tanky deck a while ago, while I was flying my Staber 2. The fight took about, I would say, 55 minutes. Uh, about 55 minutes. And the Drake took Balash level damage at the end. Was a very, very tough fight. And both pilots, me and the, and the Drake pilot, were at the edge of our seats throughout the whole battle. And I did record that, I think it's uh, the, the solo stabber video that, that I did a while ago. One of the rare moments where uh, you can have a lot of fun flying cheaper ships. And I say this a lot lately, but I had the most fun in the game while having a PvP battle with a cheap ship and a skilled pilot. I had so much fun, I had so much more fun fighting with a cheap ship than fighting with expensive ships because pilots who fly the cheaper ships know what they're doing and most of them are highly skilled so they basically know how to take advantage of any ship they fly. So that's what I noticed and I myself start to fly cheap ships lately. I used to fly so so expensive ships back when I remember that I actually had a full-on A-type Ortus without stabs and, that, and I yeeted that in low solo in many many cases. I'm not really sure if I can do that uh, with another Ortus because I just don't see a point in having A-types on that thing anymore. I use the Ortus currently with torpedo launchers and I think I will keep the torpedo launchers on the Ortus. But again, I really started to like the torpedo launchers or the rapid missile launchers, both are excellent weapon systems. Enemy ships detected. Which is a very... We're under attack interesting turn of events. So my apologies if I sound a little bit We're distracted. We had a Macarial jump uh, not into the not into the gate but we, we jumped attack. a Macarial and things happened so fast that uh, I thought that I might miss the target for a second. Thankfully I did manage to land I did manage to undock on time so, usually if I sound distracted, it's mostly because I'm playing on two devices at the same time. One device records this, the other device records PvP. <laughs> so, yeah. Multitasking on a whole new uh, level. Sometimes it can be quite... Not exhausting, but quite taxing. And I make a mistake, which is sometimes quite obvious so that's one of the one of the reasons why it happens so the drake is clearing this mission fairly easy now you can use basically any ship you like for high sec missions uh, any ship can have high dps if you put enough skills into the ship if you build the ship for dps it will give you dps that's that's how it goes the only exception will be the logistic ships or guardians. Uh, they don't have the DPS, but most other ships have. So, if you want to use the Drake for high sec missions, you can actually have battleship level DPS on this thing. Since the Drake has like five low slots, you only need one. You only really need one afterburner, one large booster, and everything else can be ballistic controls, one large Nosferatu, one web, and a scrambler or dual webs, and you should be good to go for high sec missions. You will be having about 5,000 5, DPS, I believe, with a good build. 
5000 DPS and that is already battleship level DPS so you will be flying through the the high sec missions without a problem the Nosferatu will maintain the the shield booster and the afterburner will maintain the ship's shield in a very good shape because the afterburner can help you to speed tank the targets now I know the deck is not the best ship for speed tanking because it's big it's it's definitely not the fastest it's quite slow if you, if you ask me but it can speed tank high sec missions easily because high sec missions are not that difficult in terms of uh, of tank so you could make the drake a high sec mission boat if you like now for low sec i would not recommend that you go one dps however it can work but i would say tank is the way to go because other ships can also have high dps and usually pirates that attack pirates that will scan in low sec have dps build only uh, they basically have no tank on their ship built for the destroying targets in a very quick time frame and as i like to say as i've proven many many times before having a good tank is going to be much more beneficial in low sec than having full dps if you are running missions and i also like to say a good tank beats good dps so again i felt that on my own skin i was on attack. both sides of the receiving end i had the chance to uh, be the one who has crazy tank versus high dps and at the same time i also had the chance to experience having high dps but being unable to break a tank and basically being forced to warp away so a good tank will definitely uh, beat high dps of course if you get jumped by 18 ships yeah nothing much you can do about that but not many will send a whole fleet at a drake after all these ships are fairly cheap so you should not be expecting i don't know balgorns landing on a drake that's going to be silly by the time a battleship lands on your drake you are already warping and by the time the battleship is fully stopped in the mission you are already docked so you can expect a cinnabal to attack you you can expect uh, cover tops cruisers to attack you you can expect interceptors frigates those are the ships these are the ships that are mostly going to go and attack a drake and of course if you have rapid missiles you will be clapping all those ships because they will have a hard time to go through the tank of this thing now in some cases and i've been thinking uh, thinking about that through uh throughout recording this video in some cases having no propulsion module is also uh, not as bad as it sounds because you can add a damage control you can add one one reactive shield hardener you can add things like that even a uh, missile guidance computer can be can be very helpful so if you add extra tank then whatever jumps you in the mission if they get scrambled and webbed they are most likely dead and speaking of no propulsion build i think that it might be a good option if you like to bait in a scout or in quest normally because in a scout or in quest normally you will be sitting at the warp in basically waiting for the targets to warp in and when they warp in you basically insta lock them and they don't have anywhere to go 
so that's also uh, one situation where having no proportion module is going to be very useful after all again if you catch someone with high dps and you have very good tank they will probably not going to be able to break your tank and if they can't break your tank and if they can't warp away they are going to be dead so that's uh, that's how things go and honestly all that makes me like the drake more and more i can see why my friends like to fly their ship the drake is truly a very interesting little boat and kind of makes me feel sad that I see so many so many cursed builds out there I mean I think most of you know and I'm fairly sure 90% of you have seen the the cursed builds that that we get and some of them are really bad some of them I can see why they they made a mistake you know it, it happens by accident let's say you mistake one heatsink for a jar of stabilizer, it happens, it happens to me, so, you know, that kind of, that kind of can be looked past, but an armor tank on a shield tank ship is just a big nope, and uh, makes me really sad to see builds like that in, uh, in the game. I even argued with someone who supposedly should know how to build ships, but apparently everything I, I heard about them ended up being true, I guess. I argued, I did argue with them about a bloody hybrid tank prophecy. So, yeah, uh, that's unfortunately what happened, and even to this day we have hybrid tank shield tank prophecies flying around that are very easy kills because it takes about one or two hits to remove the shield of prophecy and yeah uh, if you have a shield booster and no no tank basically on the on the on the shield even if you have a tank one or two hits and your shield is gone on the prophecy so yeah unfortunately that's uh, what's happening but on the bright side I really hope that I can at least inspire players to uh, to go and fit their ship in a similar way that is going to last them for a very long time and a build that is going to be very hard to shoot down. I have to say I cleared this mission very quickly uh, or perhaps I just had so much fun flying this ship that I did not notice time flyby but in any case the Drake is a a very interesting ship I must say definitely a very interesting ship and I see why players like this thing. I actually start to like this ship after this video, so um, there is a good chance that I might start eating a Drake around because why not? It's a very fun to fly a ship after all. So, with that being said, I really hope that I could help you with building your own ship, or at least I hope that I was able to inspire you to to come up with your own build for the drake so with that being said i love you all fly safe stay safe and as always i'll see you next time